Here. Former President Trump joined us earlier while on his way to launch his final campaign blitz, making stops later today in North Carolina and Virginia. And Will wants to know why so much North Carolina. Well, joining us now is the Trump 2024 National Press Secretary, Caroline Levitt. So she can answer that question. Good morning, Caroline. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good to see you guys. We have it up on the wall. I think we can shoot this. Uh, where both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump plan to spend the last three days here before the election. And the audience can see the different states and cities where they're going to be visiting. I did notice, Caroline, a lot all three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, at least a portion of the day in North Carolina. A lot of focus for you guys on North Carolina. Yeah, well, look, President Trump is holding 10 rallies in the next three days, barnstorming the country. It's been more than 70 days, and he has not taken a single day off, and that certainly isn't going to change over the next three. The Tar Heel State is a critical to the path to victory. It's We're confident President Trump is going to win it for the third time. And if you look at the early voting trends in North Carolina, Republicans are leading. Same goes for Arizona and Georgia. Republicans are doing 20 points better this this year with early voting than we did in 2020. So all of the data is showing a big victory on Tuesday night. We are cautiously optimistic, but obviously not taking a single voter for granted. We're focused on encouraging everyone to get out and to vote early for President Trump. Our closing message in this race is very simple. Kamala Harris broke it. President Trump is going to fix it. And it's a stark contrast to the very ne negative and vitriolic closing message that we're hearing from the op opposing campaign. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Garbage and all kinds of stuff coming from the other side about uh, those voting for Donald Trump. I want to talk about strategy because you're hearing a lot of people, maybe it's Nikki Haley, there are others saying it. Donald Trump needs to speak more to women. But it's very clear if you look at this campaign that Donald Trump believes there's a lot of men out there who agree with his policies, who also feel, um, I would say, uh, upset about all the, you know, attacks on men, with calling them toxic, um, all, the, all the things that make it harder to be a man, including putting, putting food on the table these days, that he's clearly going after the male vote. Can you talk to us about that strategy? Because there seems to be a lot of debate about what he should be doing and who he should be talking to. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly there is a big gender gap in this election, and it's a problem yeah. for the Harris campaign when mm. it comes to men. President Trump is leading Kamala Harris with men in this country by more than 20 points. But I would reject the premise that President Trump is not speaking to women at all. He talks to them every single day when he is out on the campaign trail because all issues are women's issues. Women in this country want prosperity for our children. We want more money in our pockets. President Trump is offering to do that with more tax cuts and to end inflation. Women want safe Safety and security. Yes. And what has happened in Kamala Harris's America over the past four years is every woman's worst nightmare to have illegal immigrant criminals, rapists, and murderers coming over our border, taking the lives of innocent women who Kamala Harris has never even called, by the way. President Trump is going to protect women in our families. He's going to restore law and order in this country, and he's going to put more money in our pocketbooks. That's an appealing message to women. And again, all of the data we see right now is very encouraging with both genders. Well, Caroline, we had uh, President Trump on the program earlier talking about that very subject. Here he is. Well, I know Mark very well. He's a very insecure guy. Can't hit a golf ball more than 50 yards. He's weak physically and mentally, as far as I'm concerned. But I've known him for a long time. You know, he's totally retracted his statements, like, you know, weak people always do. They retract their statements. But he was hit by some of the strongest, not human beings, women. He was hit by the strongest people, that it wasn't men, women, it was women. He was hit by women that make men look like babies because you know many of the women that I deal with and that I have, and I could go over the list, but the list is long, including the fact that I happen to be married to a rather strong woman who just right now is the number one bestseller in the whole wide world in her book, Melania. Uh, so, no, I've surrounded myself with women. I've given women chances, too. I mean, I had Kellyanne as the head of uh, my 2016 big victory. So you take that, uh, the comments that Mark Cuban made, and you add them to that Julia Roberts ad where she's saying, oh, hide your vote from your husband. <laughs> There's almost this cartoonish view of who conservative women are, who all women are, um, which cr creates an opportunity for, for you in the campaign. 
well, what does the Democrat Party offer women? They think the only issue women care about is abortion, which I personally yeah. think is incredibly insulting. Again, women care about having money in our pockets. We care about border security and safety in our neighborhoods. And we don't want to be in a World War III where we're going to have to see our children go off to fight in foreign conflicts. President Trump is offering peace and security and prosperity. And that's a very appealing message to women. And Mark Cuban, he certainly learned not to mess with strong, intelligent women who support President Trump. The backlash was epic. And I'm still waiting on Kamala Harris to go to a microphone and condemn her top surrogate, Mark Cuban, for those disgusting and insulting comments to not just the women on President Trump's campaign and all those of us who work for him, but the tens of million of women who are proud to cast their ballots for him in this election. Yeah, well, let's talk about strong women. She had a baby while she was, was on this campaign. Say, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Mark, you've been taking a direct shot at you, Caroline. Absolutely. She's, uh, your son, three months old? Three months? Three weeks. Three months, yeah. Three months. Three months. Three months. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Beautiful baby. Yeah. And running a campaign. Caroline, thanks for being yes, with some Fox. You. Thank you, Caroline. How dare Mark say that? So she was like the perfect person to have. Like, <laughs> this is a woman who just had a baby in the middle of the campaign, killing it, and then here we go. <laughs> I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.